Hi everybody, welcome to your genetics and heredity. This is just your intro video notes on just kind of some of the basics of genetics. So we'll start by talking about Gregor Mendel. So Gregor Mendel is the father of genetics. So he was a monk and he spent his adult life studying how parent plants pass traits down to their babies. And he was most famous for pea plants. So why peas? Well, there were two major reasons why Mendel chose to study peas, and that's because they reproduce very quickly, and they also have lots of offspring when they reproduce. So that made them ideal species to study how traits are passed down through multiple generations. He studied seven major traits of peas, and this is just kind of an FYI. Um, we'll pretty much focus on examples of seed and pea color, as well as flower color. But he also looked at the color of the pod, the shape or texture of the seed, the seed pod shape, the stem length, and the stem flower position. So another term that you will hear referenced in this unit is true breeding. So true breeding is when you are essentially breeding for a specific trait or you get a purebred. So he would control the fertilization to make sure that the same trait was always produced. Sorry, wow, big fire truck. The same trait was always produced. So purebred then means when this particular flower color, for example, is crossed with another flower of that color, it will always produce the same thing. So a lot of you, if you have a purebred dog at home, if you breed a purebred and a purebred, you always get the same. So poodle crossed with poodle, you always get poodle puppies. You're not gonna randomly get a beagle puppy, right? So what if purebreds are mixed? So if any of you have a mutt, this is a perfect example of crossbreeding. And there's my mutt there, that's Zane. So crossbreeding is lots of different breeds. Now he came from funsies. Um, that's his mix. We did one of those little DNA swab tests. But as you can see, he has up to five different breeds in his DNA. So when we talk about purebreds versus crossbreds or cross-pollination in plants, there's some terminology we need to talk about. So you're going to see P, F1, and F2 generations. These are essentially, like if you were to imagine, your grandparents are your P generation, the F1 is your parents, and F2 is you. So same thing with Ps. So P generation was the initial parent generation, then you have their offspring, then to get F2, you cross two F1s. Now, granted, in peas, inbreeding isn't really as much of a problem as it would be in humans, for example, but you get the point. So then we have dominant versus recessive. So dominant traits are traits that are just expressed over another. So you could say that purple flowers are dominant in peas, meaning they're going to be expressed instead of white. And we'll talk about alleles in just a second, which makes that a little more clear. So traits and alleles, we've already covered genes and DNA and how we get the traits that we have. So your genes have these traits. And as a result, they relate to the characteristics that you have or show. So we'll talk about showing versus in your DNA in a minute. But your alleles then are alternative forms of the gene, and these are represented by letters. So if we bring back Punnett squares, big letters, little letters, like capital A, little a, cross with little a, little a, hopefully that doesn't traumatize you to remember because we're going to be doing a lot of it in the next few weeks. But those alleles are what are in the crosses. And so in peas, for example, there are two alleles for flower color, either purple or white. So when we look at the crosses Mendel did, he took those purebred purple, meaning they always had purple offspring, and he crossed them with purebred white. Well, what happened was he got all purple flowers, which told him that purple is the dominant allele. So in that parent generation, you had purple crossed with white. All of your offspring were big A, little a, or a heterozygous. Then you take your F1 generation, and you cross two heterozygous, and you got three purple and one white. 
All right, so when we talk about conclusions, so this part is super, super important. So put a big star by this in your notes. Mendel came up with three different laws based on all of this work he did with pea plants. So first, the law of dominance, which is just simply that. Some alleles are dominant and some alleles are recessive. Next was the law of segregation. So the law of segregation is when two factors control each gene and these just simply separate during meiosis when those gametes are formed. So an example of this would be short versus tall alleles. The law of independent assortment, this is when factors for different characteristics are just that. They're independent of each other and they're distributed independently to gametes. So this is kind of more in terms of height versus flower or like in humans you might see traits. So an example to explain this a little better, so in pea plants, just because a pea plant is tall doesn't mean that it's going to have purple flowers because those two are not linked together. They are independent. So a, a plant could be tall with purple flowers or tall with white flowers and then short with purple or short with white, meaning those two traits are not linked. All right. Next, genotype, phenotype. So I've already kind of mentioned these words a little bit and they shouldn't be new to you. So a genotype is just the gene expression of a trait. Those are the alleles that are present. So you can be three things. You can be homozygous dominant for a trait, heterozygous for a trait, or recessive. And notice that we don't say homozygous recessive, we just say recessive because that's assumed. So homozygous dominant, if you're using the letter A, for example, is two big A's, two capital A's. Heterozygous would be a capital in the lowercase. And then recessive would be two lower cases. So then phenotype is the physical. So it's what the trait looks like or how it presents itself. So if we were looking over here at the, the capital, capital A or capital lowercase A, those would both be purple flowers. And then the two lowercase a's would be white flowers. And then lastly, just a real quick refresher on Punnett squares. So we're going to do lots of these and we're gonna do the big ones too that have 16 boxes instead of just four. But let's start simple. So a simple Punnett square is how you predict the possible offspring of a cross. But the catch is it has to be between two known genotypes. You can't cross one that you don't know with one that you do know unless you're trying to maybe solve the parent. So maybe you're given the offspring, you know what the offspring's genotype is, and you have to figure out the parent. So you're working backwards. But usually you're using Punnett squares on two known parents. And then as a result, you're predicting the chance. So by predicting the chance, you're looking at it in terms of percentages. So what is the percent chance of getting purple flowers or tall plants, for example. Also, super important to note, and you might wanna put a little star by this, is Mendel's crosses are with traits that show complete dominance. We're going to look at some other things that are incomplete dominance, co-dominance. So those things, Mendel's rules and laws don't apply, but everything that we do regarding Mendel will be complete dominance traits. And that is it for your genetics intro.